Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. Today we're going to be tackling a kind of transition that seems to be used in a lot of high-end travel videos. Some people refer to it as the Luma Wipe, other people refer to it as the Sam Calder effect because that seems to be one of the people who's made it popular. But for our purposes, we're going to be calling it a gradient wipe. So what does it look like? Well, let's take a look. This effect has the potential to be really powerful because it treats every single piece of footage differently. Basically, it tells Premiere to make certain parts of your footage transparent based on its luminance or its brightness. This means that every transition will be based on what's actually inside of your clip, making it feel more organic and more planned out. And the best part is that this can all be done inside of Premiere Pro. So let's get started making your very own gradient wipe. The first thing we're going to do is dive inside of Premiere Pro and import the footage that we're going to work with. Take the footage that you want to start with and place it on your timeline. Now take the footage that you want to appear next that you want to transition into. Take the second piece and overlap it slightly with the first. Make sure that the overlap is at least as long as you would like the transition to last. This is because when the effect begins, part of your footage is going to become transparent, and if you don't have footage underneath your original shot, we'll just see black. Now here's where we start to piece together the effect. Go to your effects tab and go to either video effects, transition, and gradient wipe, or type in gradient wipe into the search bar and then choose the one underneath video effects, not video transitions. Drag and drop this effect onto the clip that's highest. You can actually have either clip on top, the one you're starting with or the one that you're transitioning into. They both have the same process with just one step reversed. But for now, let's keep this clip on top and place our effect. Go to your effect controls panel and you'll see our gradient wipe at the bottom here. You can see that we have a parameter here called transition completion. If we drag this from 0 to 100, we can see that our transition takes form. It starts with the darkest parts of our image and makes them visible, while the brightest parts are still showing the clip beneath it. So let's keyframe our transition to go from 100 to 0. This is really amazing because in this example, the last thing to be shown in our new clip is the horizon. This sort of makes it look like there's this new world peeking over the mountains of our shot. But we can change some parameters for how this effect looks. Below transition completion, we have the transition softness. If we increase this value, we can see that it takes down how harsh and pixelated this effect looks, and feathers it out a little bit. Try playing around with this value and then watching your clip transition to see how it looks. Next is the gradient layer, which simply changes which video layer this gradient will stem from. You can see which layer each video track is by this marker of V and then the number beside it. So this is layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, etc. So right now it's set for video layer number 2, which is this one. But if we change it to layer number 1, we can see that it's now taking from our first clip. So now the dark parts of this clip are the ones that appear first, soon to be followed by the rest. Let's switch it back to layer number two. Finally, we come to invert gradient, which essentially just flips the priority from lights to darks in terms of what's being made transparent first. So we can see the difference between normal and inverted looks something like this. Now, if we wanted to take this same clip and do the reverse to transition out of this into another clip, simply keyframe your transition completion in reverse. If you started from 100 to zero, now go from zero to 100 or exactly the opposite. The key is no matter what, your transition is going to look and feel different for every piece of footage you use. So the key is to play around and find something that you like and that works with the story that you're trying to tell. And that's it. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.